as as people know, we are, we love our ACC, right? I, we I, all grew I, up I, in I, ACC country yep. or attended ACC schools. Um, so, you know, basically, like this coming weekend, well, actually next weekend, really, because this week is week zero. But ACC's play will, will, won't get started. The teams that is until the following weekend, uh, which I we cannot wait for that as well. As but well. before we get into the to the um, into the season preview, uh, I want to touch upon this alliance. So basically, as you all go, like the SEC made this printer strike and poaching Oklahoma and Texas from the Big Twelve. So everyone and their mamas wonder what are the other conferences going to do. How are they going to respond? Are they going to start poaching um, the remainder, the leftovers, if you will, from the from the Big 12? Are they going to start poaching each other? What's going to happen? So basically, long, very long story short, Big 12 Commissioner Bob Bowlesby, who I feel sorry for, by the way, he met up with the Pac-12 Commissioner uh, to talk upon, to speak upon an alliance and such, right? Only to have the same Pac-12 Commissioner hit up the Big 10 and the ACC Commissioner Kevin Warren and Jeff Fields, respectively, and they formally announced their alliance yesterday. So the Big 12 is once again ass out on the outside <laughs> yeah. looking in. So Rough Jeff, for him. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel bad for him. It's like he has to kick me, sign on the back of his shirt. I mean, Bob Bowles, we God <laughs> bless him. Whoo! Anyway, I know he's gonna have a tell memoir. It's gonna be off the chain. But anyway, Jeff, I'm gonna start with you. Gonna move to Matthew as well. Like, give me your thoughts on what this merger will mean to you because to me i know they talk about schedule but that's like years down the road because as we all know football schedules out of conference are set up at least four or five years in advance mm -hmm. but basically it's matchups and i want to touch upon an, an, an article the atlantic momentarily where it talks about the impact of this alliance that comes to scheduling as well and maybe marketability for tv networks but give me your thoughts jeff on on this alliance and how big of a deal this is in college football I mean, I think I think the concept is good. Um, you know, the other three power conferences had to do something right. uh, in response to the SEC. Um, you know, because if it, if the F SEC had been left to their own, I mean, we could be looking at you know unlimited scholarships, um, you know, playoffs with with six SEC teams. Uh, NIL with with no caps. I mean, it, it'd just be like a free for all, which you know obviously favors the SEC. So um, I, I like the idea that they're attempting something. Um, I think they're going to try to take the place a little bit of the of the NCAA, who has absolutely no relevance now in college sports. Basically, right. um, they, they've basically given up. So I think you need some kind of uh, administrative body and I don't know if it necessarily comes from these three but they're going to at least attempt to to try to rein some of this in now for, for me the the real question is you know is it going to have any teeth uh, mm -hmm. you know they don't have any signed contracts everything sounds you know real kumbaya yesterday right. everything's handshake and everything's handshaking <laughs> and and what I think is you're going to know if this deal really has any teeth in about a month. Uh, and that's when the playoff proposal is, is back up for discussion. And if they just basically go along with what was already decided by, by Greg Sankey, Jack Swarbrook of Notre Dame, Bob Bowsby, and I um, can't remember the commissioner, other commissioner from the group of five who was part of the four. Uh, when Craig they Thompson. Proposed, Craig Thompson. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if they have those, if they stay with, that proposed format, then I really question if there'll be any any teeth to this alliance. So what I hope to see is that they come back and say, hey, wait a minute, we want to change some of these rules. And, and even if they don't necessarily make sense right off the bat, you know, say they put out there, we're going to cap the number of teams to three, or we're going to have auto bids uh, for conference champions or something like that, just something that's like a, a significant change to the proposal, that'll get me to really start to believe like, hey, there's something to these three um, being aligned together because they took the payoff for so proposal. Right. Now they looked at it as a block and decided to change something significantly to it. So I, I'm kind of on a wait and see mode uh, on this alliance. I like the concept. Um, I think it's a, it's a, it's at least something in response to the SEC, but 
Right. Uh, let, let's see if they put any real action behind what they're doing. And, and the playoff proposal next month will be the first opportunity for that. Yes. Yes, I totally agree. I mean, that's when you know, because I think the reports are the Pac-12 and the Big Ten are pretty much on board with the expansion uh, proposal. Mm-hmm. They may want to do less teams, but they want an expansion nonetheless because it will help. It will definitely help the Pac-12, right? So, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, it, it may not be 12. But it's going to be an expansion. That's what those two agree. The ACC is pretty much a holding pattern, mainly because the influential coaches, i.e., Dabble Sweeney and Matt Brown, they're like, yep. "Oh hell no, we don't want it." So I, I would like to see it go from twelve to eight. To be honest, I yeah. think twelve is too many. I think that opens up um, the chance of getting a, a three-loss team in there. Mm-hmm. Which, come on, you know, uh, that that's not a playoff team. You lose three regular season games and you shouldn't be playing for the national title. But right. I think if they can go to eight, you have four auto bids yep. um, and then um, a group of five and then maybe three wild cards or something to that. Um, I don't know how the big 12 is going to figure on this, but a move from 12 to eight, I think would be, uh, you know, would show, Hey, we've, we've got some teeth to this. Right. Matt, what say you, sir? Well, look, uh, and, and, I kind of had a little conversation with Jeff on the, about this on Twitter, right, guys? Mm-hmm. I mean, this is really, to me, it's more of a group of three parties that are kind of trying to stop this growing momentum of ESPN's conflict of interest with showcasing its greatest partner, it, it, what it appears to be in its eyes, its greatest partner, the SEC, every year. I, I know I sound a little... Boy, maybe I sound a little sarcastic when I say that, but, you know, th- th- I think they want to try and make sure that the college football playoff and really college football in general has more than one broadcaster in, in, e- in ESPN. I mean, ESPN has a huge conflict of interest with teaming up with the SEC. Right. And you want to, they just want to make sure that you've got these other parties that are at the table that can, that can um, that can that can televise games. That can televise televise parts of the playoffs. That can that can do the, that can do the do these other things. I mean, that's that's how I see it. It may be a short, simplified take, Jeff Jeff or Scott. You can probably add more to that, but it just seems to me that ESPN has shown that you know shown that they're kind of in bed with the SEC right now, and that you've got to have these three other parties at least. You know, they may not have something contractual down, but at least they can go together in, you know, in votes and, and try and tailor the system to something that's more their liking. I, I, I'd be curious on your guys' thoughts on what I had to say on that. Well, I mean, not only is the SEC and ESPN is in bed with SEC, it's screwing the SEC. I mean, it's, it's, it's hitting it left and right, missionary, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's really, they really get it on. But I would say this, man. It's interesting, Matt, you touch upon, you know, the other three parties. Like, keep in mind that, and you guys are just, I'm just saying this out loud. Keep in mind that <clears throat> the Big Ten and the Pac-12 had their deals coming up in two, three years from now, um, maybe four. So, basically, the Big Ten, especially going to get another big-ass piece of the, uh, of a, of a, of the apple, it make another big bite of the apple. So, what I think is going to happen, though, is I think – in response to what SEC is, is doing with the SEC, I think they are Fox property anyway, right? Even though they have a portion of the game of the games of the games go to ESPN as well, I think Fox is going to look at this if they're smart, and then Fox Sports they're going to say, "Hey, why don't we sweeten the pot, to sweeten the kitty, if you will? What if we give you blah blah blah, right?" Because with the with the Big Twelve about to go to to the to, to about to go the way of the dodo, that decreases the inventory of games for Fox Sports. I mean, remember, like every year, the the, the Red River Robbery game, Oklahoma Texas, that's a big deal for Fox Sports because they'll shoot out on the main Fox network at noon, like the last Saturday in in October or whenever the Texas State Fair is. So, um, the point is, is that Fox needs more inventory. So why not leverage that and try to go to the Big Ten? And maybe the Big Ten would, I'm sure they know that. 
that yeah. the big that, that that Fox Sports needs more inventory that ESPN could probably just suck it with them as far as they're concerned. The same with the Pac-12. They have both similar deals with they, both for Fox properties primarily, but they sublet their games as well to ESPN and to like the family and that was ESPN, ABC, all that stuff. So I think what's going to happen is with at least those two, that Pac-12 in the in the Big Ten, is that they're going to give all, they're going to just go all in with Fox Sports. That's why I think it's going to happen. I think four or five years from now, when they're both their contracts are expired, TV deals expire, they're going to go all in with Fox. Now the ACC, we're stuck for the next 15 years. <laughs> and so we we gotta we gotta play it cool. But I would say this, at least. That give us some time as far as stability in the sense that, you know, the grant of rights, you know, no one's going to want to pay. Like, I don't, I don't give a damn which it was an SEC or a Big Ten with deep pockets. They're not going to pay, like, basically, you know, like, 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 like for the years remaining on the, on, on the grant of rights deal, like the payouts, what, 30, let's say, round down, say 30 million for each ACC team. So mm-hmm. basically, you, you, no, 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 conference in its right mind is going to pay let's say 30 times 15 north 15 years north Carolina mouth tells me it's 450 million dollars no one's going to pay yeah. that for no. one team no. no no nobody's leaving the acc I, w- I would i wouldn't even consider it until about 2030 but you you guys both touched on a couple points uh-huh. that i think works somewhat to the to the acc's advantage or at least creates a little bit of leverage that they didn't have before. And, and okay, like you said, the SEC totally in bed with ESPN. Their their big property, uh, Fox Sports, is going to try to retain the Pac-12 and the Big Ten and their then their next TV deals. And the big carrot that is out there for Fox and ESPN are the upcoming playoffs, which that is ending in twenty twenty five or twenty six. So about, going yeah. back to that where you see T, if they just agree with that proposal, I think ESPN can start negotiating to extend that deal. But if it's delayed, goes out to open market, okay, you got two Fox properties, one ESPN property, and one ESPN property, the ACC, that's kind of in the middle. If I'm ESPN and I want those playoffs, I'm going, hey, which way are you going to vote? You know, uh, ACC, and everything comes with a price. And, and a few weeks ago, everyone was wondering, you know, how is Jim Phillips, the new commissioner, you know, what does he have that that can sweeten the pot? That long-term deal that you mentioned, Scott, 2036. Now he's got a little bit of leverage because he can, he's part of that alliance. He's got the ears and and of those two other conferences of trying to get ESPN for their playoffs. And if I'm if I'm Jim Phillips, I'm going to ESPN like, hey, you know, make it worth my while. I don't care who gets the, the playoffs, but I can help try to get you the playoffs if you kind of sweeten the pot for me a little bit. And my teams who are stuck in this 15-year deal, undervalued deal. Right. So I think he's created a little bit of leverage where he had none before. Yeah, and that's a good – that's that's the first time I heard that, dude. That's a very good point because everybody in mom, including yours truly – we thought that the ACC, the only great thing about that terrible ass 15 year contract is that you have 15 more years on, which means yeah. that not a lot of teams are going to want to move around. So we thought that was the only thing they had going for them. But now you touch upon a great point. So this is it creates an interesting dynamic with the with ESPN. Now I will say this, guys. Me that Jim Phillips is a Big Ten guy, his roots are in the Big Ten. So yep. basically the ACC went outside the family to get this guy. And it's turned out to be a damn good, good thing because of how he thinks. He came out and said during ACC media days, football has to be it. He right. said that more than once. Unlike the, out, the, the predecessor, John, the, the great John Swaffer, he did a lot of great things for the league. He, I mean, poached Miami, poached Virginia Tech from the Big East, like to keep the ACC from becoming the biggies, the go to where the biggies. He saw it all coming. Uh, and Gene Corrigan before him saw all that coming when he coached Florida, when he convinced Florida State to come on board. Um, but let me ask y'all this. If the, all the good things that Josh Wolford did from the conference, done for the conference, right? 
brought in a lot of these big ass media markets into the league, expanded the footprint to Syracuse, New York, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Boston, Massachusetts, you know, brought in Louisville, get the more the Midwest market. Um, some tells me that John Swafford wouldn't have gone along with the alliance because I think he's he's so much, he's so basketball centric. He's old school that way. He's so basketball centric, I think. I think he made the moves of Syracuse and Pitt, not only just for the media markets as, pert as pertaining to Pittsburgh and Sy in, in New York, but I think he had basketball in mind when he made the move. Not to say that he had other viable candidates, which, which we made up for in Louisville, by the way, as far as overall sports. So, Matthew, am I, am I missing something here? Do, do you think that Josh Wofford would have gone along with this alliance, or do you think he would have just stood by the SEC's feet and the ESPN's feet as he's done in the past? No, I think he would have gone along with the alliance just okay. simply because, because he knows that he knows, and you know, like we all know, that football is the major, at least for most of the campuses, football is the major revenue driver. And right, in fact, right. in many cases, it pays for a lot of the non-revenue sports with its ticket, you know, ticket re ticket revenues and TV revenues and things like that. So right, I'm, right. I'm I'm certain that he would have gone gone along with that. And also, I mean, you brought up yourself that that long-term contract that we have that that the ACC has right now that you know isn't quite ad advantageous advantageous for us and Jeff brought up good points where there's potential but uh, potential leverage for bar you know for bargaining room right now so I'm I'm certain that he would have got I'm certain that he would have gone along with that ally alliance and I'm also certain that I mean you didn't ask this but I'm also certain that that you know not signing any contracts right now gives them flex you know gives them flexibility it doesn't lock them into a deal and if you're signing contracts or things like that you know potentially and you're trying and you end up trying to poach other teams then that can be that can be like considered breaking a contract and things like that so it's right. giving them some flexibility to move around when they when they need to, when they need when they need to you know if the media market changes and things like that so right yeah. How about uh, how about you, Jeff? Do you think that uh, that John would have went along with the alliance, even though he had previous allegiance to the SEC and whatnot? Um, I, I think that he probably also would have went with the alliance because because the, what the SEC did was was so uh, you know such an earthquake move of getting Oklahoma and Texas. I, I think that he would have done he would have done something uh, in response. And so from my, my understanding, it's like the PAC-12, um, Kliakoff, their commissioner was the one who drove this. And, yes, um, he did. Yep. Yeah. And I, I think that, that Swafford would have been part of this. What I don't know if John Swafford would have done is, um, you know, you said he did, some, he did some good things and he did do some good things. Um, but I think a lot of the good things he did were like really reactionary things. They were yeah. after somebody else did something. And then he did a pretty good job of kind of circling the wagons, uh, so to speak, you know, maybe picking up another team like Louisville, um, you know, that sort of thing. I think he was pretty good at that, but I'm not sure if he was ever really like a true visionary, like the way Jim Delaney was um, when he had the opportunity to, to have a network um right you know 13 14 years ago and even though it was the president who voted against it you know i i think um you know had he been like more visionary he could have pushed pushed for that and so i think swafford would have went with the alliance but i'm not sure he would have looked at it as a a leverage point with espn and i think jim phillips will do that i think he will i think he's savvy enough that he'll look at it and say hey how can i use this alliance um, to, to, you know, somehow boost revenues in the ACC. Well, I think John Swafford would look at it like, um, I'm going to join this alliance because I'm, I'm more in uh, favor of keeping the SEC from doing things. So I think they would have, he would have joined, but I, I have a feeling Jim Phillips is going to be a little more uh, strategic and in, 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 in its future than, than I think Swafford would have been. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. It, I, one thing I do like about Jim Phillips, he's he's an out. He's out. Not only he was he was the outside the box hire, he's an outside the box thinker. And what he's yeah, been and, saying. And he came from the from the Big Ten, so they're yes. very familiar with him. They trust him. 
um, which is something I'm not sure um, you you would have that quite as much with with Swafford because I mean they know Jim Phillips. He came from Northwestern. All yeah. those other ads and Kevin Warren, they all know him so well. I mean they know John John Swafford too, but maybe there's just not that quite that level of of trust. That, right. that he would have had like Swafford seemed to, you know, he did seem to be a little bit more tied in with what the SEC would be doing. So I, I, I think it's good that Phillips is the commissioner, you know, at this point in time. 